Hello everyone, I'm Theo Hartzell. In today's video, I want to talk to you about how to increase the effectiveness and power of your prayer, and not only that, but also how to enhance your relationship with God and take it to a whole nother level. Now, there may be times and seasons, and you may be in one right now, where it seems like God is nowhere around. You can't feel God. Your prayers don't feel effective. It feels like your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling and you're wondering, why do I even need to be praying? What I'm going to show you is a process of positioning yourself where you will instantly change the effectiveness and power, the potential of your prayers. And it's also going to make you instantly feel God and feel closer to God. Now, I want to share this process with you that I have received from the Lord. And I also have put an acronym to it four letters of four words that will help you keep this model in your mind so that you can remember it your own self. Now, the process of positioning yourself will only take one to two seconds after you know what we're doing, but I'm going to take the time to explain it in depth and detail for you to have the knowledge of how and why we're doing it. I want you to know how and why and then you will be able to just instantly change your prayer life and your relationship with God. Now, with that being said, let's turn to a story in the Bible in Luke chapter 18, and we'll start at verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Now, I want to jump in here in this parable and talk to you about something that the Lord showed me out of this. And I know and understand because Jesus said the main gist of this parable was talking about someone who was looking at their own righteousness, their self-righteousness, in comparison to somebody else and feeling like this other person is insignificant or inferior to them. Now, but the Lord showed me a revelation right there in verse 11, where it said that the Pharisee stood and prayed with himself. And the Lord gave me a revelation and an understanding, a download, if you will, at that moment, because you have two people go at the exact same time to the exact same place to do the exact same thing. And that's what? To pray. And yet the Bible says, Jesus said that the Pharisee prayed with himself. In other words, what am I saying? He was sitting there going through the motions of prayer, the effort of prayer, and all of the things associated with prayer. And yet his prayer never ascended to God, never came before the throne of God, never was heard and graced by God's ears. In other words, the prayers never left the individual, even though he is going through prayer. However, and we'll look at this in depth later, I don't want to get into it too deep, but later you will see that the publican was sitting there and would not even look up to heaven. He bowed his eyes and he was sitting there striking his chest and beating on his chest. We'll examine that in detail but the point I'm making is that the Pharisee was praying and yet was not heard by God. His prayer was not taken to God. It did not come before God's throne. And yet the publican is sitting there at the exact same time, at the exact same place, going through prayer. And his prayer is coming to God and going before God. And he walked away justified, whereas the Pharisee did it. What is the lesson? The lesson is this. There are ways of praying and prayers you can pray that never go to God, that never come before God, even though you are at the house of worship or in intercessory prayer, 
and your prayer never leaves you. Okay, now I want to show you this process of positioning yourself in prayer and in your relationship to God and the supernatural realm. Now, an acronym that I came up with for this, just to give you a model, I'm not saying it is set in stone, I'm just trying to give you a bullet list, but the acronym that I wanna give you is REAL, R-E-A-L. And the R stands for recognize. And we'll look at some other words to help clarify what I mean. But R stands for recognize. E stands for engaged. A stands for attention. And L stands for listen. And like I said, we'll clarify that in depth more. Now, I'm not saying this is set in stone. I am simply trying to give you a model, some guideposts, an outline, a bullet list, for you to remember this, as you are learning how to do this yourself, it can give you a reminder. Okay, here's the first step. Here's the second step. Here's the third step. And here's the fourth step. Now, this only takes one to two seconds to do it once you learn what I'm doing. Literally, in one second, two seconds, you can do this process of what I'm telling you. But one thing I feel like I must say is you must believe that God wants to help you. You must believe that God has every intention to bless you. So if God is standing right here beside you, or if there's an angel right here beside you, they are not trying to hurt you. They are not trying to harm you. They're not waiting to kill you with some flaming sword, and they are not waiting to strike you with a lightning bolt. If you have a subconscious thought process running in you that God is critical and judgmental of you, and just waiting to punish you for every little mistake you make, you are greatly going to struggle to receive anything from God because you have a veil over your heart that is trying to protect you from even hearing and feeling God in the first place because you are afraid if you really, really hear God and if you really, really feel God, then he's going to be disappointed in you and you're going to hear something that you don't want to hear. The first thing that I would tell you before we even get started, you must come to the realization, if you've got to tell it to yourself over and over, you must make yourself believe that God wants to bless you, he wants to anoint you, he wants to empower you, he wants you to be financially blessed, he wants you to walk in health and provision, and he wants to take care of you as a father. Now, I want to dig in first to the R in this acronym of how to position yourself in prayer and in your relationship to God. Now, R would stand for recognize, but you could also say it stands for realize or remember or other things. Let me explain what I mean when I say recognize. Now, first off, you must realize and recognize that God is alive. The Bible says over and over, countless verses, that God is a living God. He is alive. You must understand that God is a supernatural being who is alive. That means he can hear, he can talk, he has feelings, maybe emotions, and he is alive and in your life and wanting to help and bless you. And herein lies one of the problems that we have in our relationship to God. And that is often we never feel God and we never feel angels. We're not allowed to see angels. We're not allowed to see demon. You may have never seen or had an encounter with God at all. And you can feel like it's all a fairy tale and you're wondering if it's even true at all. And because you cannot feel God and you cannot see God and you don't see angels and demons and all these supernatural things going on, your heart is not wanting to open up to receive it. So one of the first things that you must do is recognize that there are angels around you, there are demons around you, and that there is a God and he is alive and he is wanting to help and bless you. And he may even be standing beside you. At the very least, the angels are beside you. For example, the Bible tells you, be careful not to forget to entertain strangers because some have actually entertained angels unaware. In other words, the person was talking to a real, live, supernatural being from another realm. It was an angel, and yet their understanding was locked, and they didn't even know that they were talking to an angel. The point being is that the supernatural being was real, but they were not allowed 
to sense that it was actually an angel. Another example that I can give you is the Bible talks about how even the little children and people have a guardian angel, an angel that's with him, and they go before the Lord. So you have a guardian angel, whether you feel him or not. You have an angel that's with you all the time. The Bible even says that the angels of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. Now that word encampeth in the Hebrew is a military word, meaning a military entourage. In other words, those that fear the Lord, there is literally an angelic host, a military encampment that goes with you everywhere you go to the grocery store, to your job, walking down the road, going on vacation. You may not feel them, but there are angels, if you fear the Lord, in camp round about you like a military enclave. You get up, they get up. You walk, they go with you. You sit down, they are around you. They go with you everywhere you go. A perfect example I think about is how Elisha in the Old Testament was surrounded by the enemy. And his servant was fearful and afraid and like, oh no, what are we going to do? And Elisha said, calm down. There's more that are with us than that are with the enemy. And Elisha prayed for his servant's eyes to be opened. And when his eyes were open, he saw that the mountain was completely full of angelic warring angels who were made of fire. And they were there the whole time, although the servant was not even the faintestly aware that they were there. The point I'm trying to make is when it comes to this process of prayer and positioning yourself before the Lord, you must recognize, realize, and remember that there are supernatural beings around you all the time and that God is real and that God is alive and that God is listening to you. You must be aware. You must remember, realize, and recognize that even right now where you are, there are supernatural beings all around you. A perfect example that I can give you is, for example, I have a cell phone, right? And so I can call friends, family, whoever. I can call anybody on this cell phone. Now, although I cannot see that person, I know that that person really does exist. What's my point? My point is you may say, well, I don't feel God and I can't see God. So how do I know he's real? Well, let me ask you this. How do you know that the person on the cell phone is real? Because they are real and because they are alive. The same way that I would tell you, you may not be able to see God and maybe you don't always feel God, but you must absolutely believe he's there because although you can't see him and possibly don't feel him, he is alive, there, and real, and so are all of the angels around you. So the first thing that I want you to do is to position yourself in remembering, recognizing, and realizing that there are supernatural beings all around you. I will try to explain this in depth as we go. The next phase that I want to go to is E for engage. Now let's look at a verse in Job chapter four, starting at verse 15, and it says, Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, speaking about the spirit, but I could not discern the form thereof. Now pay attention to that. That's important. So a spirit passed before his face. It caused the hair all over his body to stand up on end. The spirit actually came to a stop, stood before him, but he could not discern a distinctive form about it. The point that I'm trying to make is that he felt a spirit in the room, wherever he was at, and he engaged with that spirit. So when I'm telling you the next phase or the next step is to engage, what exactly do I mean by engage? Let me give you this example. Have you ever passed somebody in your lifetime and you see them here and you see them there and you see them anywhere and around, but you never really like talked to them or had a serious conversation? And then one day, all of a sudden, for some reason, y'all like stopped, looked at each other, and then you had a conversation or you asked them how their day was going or this or that. That's my point. All you did was stop in your hustle and bustle and going busy and just sort of tentatively knowing they're there. And you stop and you look at them and you engage with them in a conversation. That's what it means to engage. For example, have you ever sat in your car and you've got the motor running and it's just sitting there? It's passive. It's not doing anything. And then all of a sudden you take it and you put it in gear. 
you engage the transmission and you put the vehicle in gear and in motion. And now it's moving. You engage the gears to make the car move. That's what I'm talking about by engage. You may be in an airport, a bus terminal. You may be walking down the street, in the subway, on a train, and there's people all around you. And you go up to the countertop where the person's at to talk to them about the ticket. And the person looks at you and you look at them and y'all make eye contact and y'all begin to talk to one another. What are you doing? You have engaged that person. You may not even say a word, but y'all are looking at one another. Why? What did you do? You positioned yourself in engagement. I'm fixing to engage this person in some form or fashion, whatever it is. And all of this actually helps tie me back into the story about the Pharisee and this publican that are sitting there praying. And the Pharisee is not getting his prayers answered. They're not being heard by God or anything. And yet the publican in his prayer and in his way of praying, he's getting an answer. And that is this. And listen, I know and understand that we are commanded to pray all the time. We're to have a habit of praying. The Bible says to pray without ceasing, for example. Pray all the time. But here's where this ends up falling on us, and we end up kind of falling into a mindless habit of prayer where we are not recognizing that there are spiritual beings around us and God is alive, and we are also not engaging with God in a serious conversation and we're not engaging with any angels or feeling their presence around us in any way. We are mindlessly, through a habit of prayer, walking around praying, and it's just mindless praying, unengaged, unaddressed, and not recognizing God at all because it has become a habit of prayer. And this is why we are praying many prayers that are not getting answered because just like the Pharisee, we are praying in a manner of prayer that is disconnected and disassociated from God Almighty and is nothing more than us praying with ourselves as a habit of prayer. Now, to give you an example of what I'm talking about, of a person talking to their self, and your prayers can actually end up being nothing more than praying or talking to yourself, just like the Pharisee. The Pharisee did not get his answer because he was praying with himself. You can think you're praying. You can think you're talking to God. You can think you are quoting scriptures to God. And literally, really, you are only praying and talking to yourself. No different than the Pharisee who is praying to himself. I'm hoping you get this, but let me reinstate it emphatically so that we get it, and I'm crystal clear. You can be praying and thinking you're talking to God, and you are doing nothing more than mindless, habitual, recital, prayer, and talking with yourself, talking to yourself. And your prayer is not going to God. It is not going to heaven. It is not being recorded. It is not doing anything constructive whatsoever for the kingdom of God because it is a habit of prayer and you're talking to yourself. For example, have you ever walked around and you're quoting scriptures over and over and over? You're not really praying that to God and you're not really talking to anybody else. You're saying it out loud to memorize it. So for example, let me try to give you an example of praying or talking to yourself versus actually talking to someone. So, for example, let's just take the Lord's Prayer as an example. So here's me. I'm going to be talking out loud, reciting it, talking to myself. Now, you watch and you see and you feel if you think I'm engaged or if I'm just mentally reciting something or talking out loud. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, that was me talking, reciting, talking out loud. That was me within myself. Now, let me try to pray as an example. I'm gonna to pray to God and I'm gonna pretend and imagine 
that God is like right behind you, and I'm talking to him. God, I love you so much, and I appreciate you, and thank you for today. Thank you that you woke me up. Thank you for my family. I love you. I appreciate you. I want to let you know that you're the most wonderful person that I've ever encountered, and I want to thank you for saving me and saving my family. I love you, and I appreciate you. And I'm going to try to do my best today, and I'm asking you to empower me and be with me and give me the things that I need today. I love you very much. I want to say thank you. Okay, let me ask you this. And wow, I got emotional there because that's, that's how easy it is to do what I'm telling you. I engaged my heart, and we'll go through this. But did you feel the difference of me talking and praying with myself versus me actually engaging and talking to the Lord. The next one that I want to talk to you about is A for attention. In other words, what you're going to need to do after you recognize and understand there's spiritual beings around you, after you lock on to the Lord and you engage with Him and you're aware that there's angels of God around you, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to focus your attention on God. You're going to make your attention come into God. You're going to remove distractions. You're going to remove other things that you're thinking about. Stop it. Block it off and focus solely on the Lord right now. A perfect example that I can give you. Listen to me. Let me give you this example. Have you ever been talking to somebody and you're pouring out your heart, what you went through, what somebody said at work, what somebody said at the grocery store, what somebody said at school, and you're going through something that's very near and dear to you, and you realize after about five or ten minutes or so that the person you're talking to is not even listening to you. They may even be looking at you, but when you look in their eyes, you know they're not paying attention to you. I probably got a big amen from all the ladies out there been trying to talk to your husband about your day and you're trying to tell him all the stuff that you went through and you know he didn't hear a single thing you said. Why? He's thinking about a football game. He's thinking about a fishing trip. He's thinking about going golfing. He's thinking about any number of things beside what you're telling him. And just a perfect example since I'm a man, I have recognized this weakness in my own life. And whenever my wife comes to talk to me and tell me something, if I have my cell phone in my hand, I have to put my cell phone down. If I'm working on my computer and doing stuff, I have to turn away from it because I'm a very one-track minded person and I like to take things to completion and finish what I'm working on. And so if I don't stop what I'm doing, there's a great possibility that I'm not going to remember and retain what she told me. So out of respect for both of us, I will stop what I'm doing. I'll put it down so that I can focus 100% of my attention on what she's telling me so that I can get it. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because this is what I mean in attention to the Lord. Block out the distractions. I'm going to position myself. I'm going to recognize. I'm going to engage. And I'm going to give God my attention. I'm not going to be distracted by all these things out here. And I'm going to focus in on what he is telling me. And I'm going to give him my attention. And the last stage of this process is L for listen. And I also have lean in in that. So in other words, listen and lean in. In other words, you are leaning in. So how would I give you an illustration or an example of this? An example that I've used many times in talking about receiving the Holy Ghost, receiving the Spirit, is that when you feel the presence of God come upon you, you have to cannonball in to what you feel. What do I mean? The example I give is if you've ever gone to a swimming pool or gone to the river or the creek or go somewhere to a lake and you want to go swimming, the worst thing that you can do, well, maybe starting off, is to dip your toe or your fingers in the water and figure out it's real cold. And what some people choose to do is they'll sit there and they'll go real, real slow. And it's painful and it's tormenting and they have to, through great willpower, get themselves fully submerged in the water, and after they're in there for a bit, then they finally adapt. 
versus the other person who sits there and they do what I call the cannonball. They take off running, get a full head of steam, they jump off and they form a cannonball position and they go down in the water and sure it's cold, sure it'll just startle you and shock you and wake you up, but it's over just like that. There was no way to get out of it. There was no plan B. They just jumped in it, they cannonballed in it, they went all in. And that's what I mean by this listen and lean in. As you're positioning yourself to God, and you're recognizing that he is there, that he's real, he's beside you, he loves you, he cares about you, he wants to bless you, he wants to give you money, he wants to give you solutions, he wants to give you wisdom. The Bible says you can even ask him for wisdom. He's wanting to empower and equip you and enable you. You've got to recognize that. Then you engage, you give him your attention, you're focused on him. And then you lean in and you press in, you push in. I'm not going to let anything pull me out of this. I'm not going to let anything distract me. You lean in, you cannonball into that. And you just go ahead and push in and dive in and submerge yourself in the presence of God and get whatever it is that you need from God. And so this whole thing that I'm trying to tell you is that you can be praying and talking to God and you are praising and worshiping and doing all of these things and it is internal to you. It is in you. It never went to God. It never went before his throne. It never came before his presence because it's something that you are doing internal to you. It's you praying and talking to you. There, I know the parable was talking about looking down on people and self-righteousness, but nestled inside of there is said that the Pharisee prayed with himself. In other words, his prayers never went to God. He never got justified. He never walked away forgiven. In other words, he had ineffective prayers because he was praying in a wrong way. Not only was he praying wrong prayers, but he was praying in a wrong way. Another thing that I want to tell you that I feel is extremely important, and this is in relation to this, because as I'm going through this process, I will picture or sense or feel that an angel is beside me or that God is near me or beside me in some way. Let me say this. I never imagine God or an angel in a human form. What do I mean and why is that important? If you try to picture Jesus as a human being in an image, more than likely you will end up subconsciously conjuring up some picture of Jesus that you saw in a movie, in a painting, in a picture. And if you do that, then the image that you have is actually of a human being, just like me and just like you, a carnal lust-driven, broken-down human beings struggling with their own sinful flesh. When I am talking about imagining God, imagining angels, becoming conscious and aware that they are around you, I am never, never trying to imagine a human form of an angel or a human form of God, a human form of Jesus. I simply try to, in my mind, Realize that there is a orb or a sphere, a, a spirit that is there. I am not trying to attach some kind of form to it. I am just aware of the spirit, of the presence that is there. The Bible says God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The point I'm being is I do not try to attach any kind of form or shape or image to him at all. And an example that I can give you is have you ever been in a room and you become conscious or aware that somebody is in the room? You don't even have to turn your eyes to look to know somebody else is in the room. You felt their presence come in the room. You felt their spirit. Maybe you heard a door open or something in the natural. Either way, but you know that a person is there because you feel their presence. Well, it's the same thing. You do not have to imagine or sense an image. It can just be that there is a person, a presence, a spirit that is there. And just a simple example that I can give you in relation to praying in yourself and with yourself and your prayers not actually going anywhere, 
Just as an example, in the book of Acts, the Bible says that Paul and Silas sang praises unto God. In other words, their praying and their praising was not bouncing off the ceiling. It was not in themselves and to themselves and among themselves. Their prayer and their praise was actually going to God. Why? Because they were conscious and aware of God, even in the middle of their situation. They might not have felt God's presence. They might not have seen an angel's presence. They might not have been aware of anything at all. But they made sure that they were engaged with God and they sang their praises, not with themselves, but they sang their praises and gave their offerings of praise to God. Another thing that I'll say is the Bible says that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. Now, that means in the Greek, an energeo, an energetic, energized, powerful prayer avails much. It's not somebody sitting there praying to themselves, with themselves. It is somebody like that publican who is praying an effectual, fervent prayer, beating their chest, won't even look at God. You know why the publican wouldn't look at God? Because he was engaged with God. He was not going through the motions of prayer. He was not going through a habit of prayer. He was actually engaged with God and could not even look up to heaven. That's what I'm talking about. He was engaged with God and he went away justified, not just because of what he prayed, but it was because of how he prayed. It was his attitude and spirit to the Lord, being open to the Lord, engaged with the Lord, and leaning into the Lord so much that he was sitting there beating his chest in a contrite spirit and could not even engage and look at God. Now, what is my takeaway in summary for you out of this video? I want you to realize first off that you can be habitually through a habit of prayer and talking to yourself and reciting things actually be praying with yourself to yourself and your prayer is not even actually going to God and being heard by God at all because you're not actually praying to God. You're actually only talking out loud, talking to yourself, talking to the atmosphere. You're not talking to God. You're not talking to any angels, any supernatural beings. You are doing nothing more than the habit of talking out loud talking to yourself, and therefore, you're not getting answers to your prayers. Your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. You're not engaged in your relationship with God because you're literally only engaged with yourself. You're talking to yourself, and therefore, your prayers are ineffective and not being answered. You may sit there and be praying for somebody to be healed of a sickness, a disease, cancer, being raised from the dead, or whatever. And if you are not engaged with God, to God, attention to God, then please be aware. It's very possible you're praying to yourself. You can be quoting scriptures left and right and spitting them out and screaming as loud as you can. You got the music blaring as loud as you can. And yet the prayer is internal and only to you, even though you're speaking it with your mouth, because you're not consciously thinking about God. Your spirit is not unlocked to God. You're not focused on God. So what do I want you to do? I want you to follow this revelation that God gave me. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it will increase the effectiveness and the power of your prayer, and it will help your relationship to God. If you can't feel God and you don't know where God's at right now, you need to go through this process that I'm telling you. Number one, R, recognize, remember, realize, that God is alive and he wants to help you and bless you. He is your father and he wants to take care of you. Realize he's listening to you. If you will engage with him, he's listening to you. Realize, recognize, and remember that. Number two, I want you to engage with him. Just like, for example, if you're walking down the road, you're passing people and all of a sudden you stop and you engage them and you address them. You're going to engage God. A, for attention. You're going to give him your attention. You're going to be aware. You're going to focus attention on him and give your attention to him. Block out distractions. And then you're going to lean in and listen to him. 
and say, God, what are you wanting to help me with? What are you wanting to tell me? What are you wanting to do? And I personally believe that when you read the Old Testament and you see that they got miracles, signs and wonders from God and God moved on their behalf and God showed up, it was because they knew how to get engaged with God and fulfill this process that I'm talking to you about instead of just going through this mindless habit of praying, this mindless habit of praying. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. On and on mindless talking out loud and is not even actually a prayer to God. Amen. God bless you. I hope this video has been a blessing to you, and I hope this is just going to set your prayer life on fire and turn your prayer life around and get you back to feeling God's presence and being near and close to God again. I pray it's been a blessing to you. I love you. I want you to know I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for your prayers for me and my family. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your prayers. I love you. I can't wait to see you in the next one. God bless you. Till next time, you pray for me, and I'll be praying for you. I love you. Bye-bye.